leukocytes or white blood cells. The job of the white blood cells is basically to protect our body against bacteria, viruses, parasites, allergens like pollen for example. And our body has to have different types of cells in order to fight these different kinds of triggers that may produce disease in our bodies. One characteristic that red blood cells have is that they do not have nucleus and they don't have organelles. On the contrary, white blood cells, they do have nucleus as well as cell organelles as you can see in this figure. So on the types of leukocytes, we said that we have the two main groups, granulocytes and agranulocytes. The granulocytes are going to be neutrophils, basophils and eosinophils, and the agranulocytes are going to be the monocytes and the lymphocytes. If we scroll down, so these are the granulocytes. Since they are granulocytes, obviously they are going to have granules inside with multiple different functions. Then we have the agranulocytes. We said the agranulocytes are going to be the lymphocytes right here. You're going to see that the next one obviously is going to be the monocytes. So instead of reading all the text that we have in here, might as well just take a look at the table where you have a summary of all the information that you have right there. So if we look at the table, the first one that we have in here is going to be neutrophil. So a couple of characteristics that you're going to have regarding the neutrophils is that they are the most abundant white blood cell that you're going to find in the blood smear, as well as the characteristics or functions that they have, which is its bacteria, phagocytosis bacteria, and releases antimicrobial chemicals. These chemicals are the ones that you're going to find in the granules. The next one that you're going to have is eosinophils. The eosinophil, the job is the release of inflammatory chemicals. You release this chemicals that you have in here and they're going to stimulate inflammation and also they're going to phagocytize antigen antibody. So when you have a parasitic infection, chances are that you're going to have an increase in the number of eosinophils that you're going to find in your blood smear. The next white blood cell is going to be basophils. Basophils, you're going to find them less than 0.5%. Then obviously that indicates that basophil is the least abundant white blood cell that you're going to find in a blood smear. What's the characteristic? As you can see here, it has a whole bunch of granules in there. These chemicals that you're gonna find in these granules are gonna be mainly histamine, as it says in here, which increases the blood flow to a, to a tissue. Also, it secretes heparin, an anticoagulant, which promotes the mobility of white blood cells. And now we go into a granulocytes, lymphocyte. The number of lymphocytes is 25 to 33% of white blood cells that you may find in the blood smear there are two different types of lymphocytes. One lymphocyte is going to be lymphocyte B and the other lymphocyte is going to be lymphocyte T. The lymphocyte B is the one in charge of producing the antibodies. The lymphocytes T are, for example, the ones that are in charge of destroying cancer cells or cells infected with viruses. The next one is going to be a monocyte. Monocytes are approximately 3 to 8% of the white blood cells that you find in a blood smear. One very important characteristic is that the monocyte, once it leaves the blood, it will turn into a macrophage. As you can see here, it says it differentiates into macrophages and phagocytizes pathogens that comes from obviously outside your body. Where do white blood cells come from? Like any other cell in your blood, they come from the bone marrow. The cell that is going to produce the white blood cells is going to be a stem cell. The stem cell is going to then differentiate into other types of cells, and eventually these other types of cells, through a series of changes and variations, eventually are going to turn into the basophils, eosinophils, neutrophils, monocytes, etc. etc. You don't need to know all these steps in here. If you keep going, you're going to see different conditions in which you may have an increase or decrease of white blood cells. If you have low number of white blood cells, then you have leukopenia. One thing that you need to differentiate is that when you have an infection, the number of white blood cells will increase, but increase is not going to be that much, maybe 20,000, 25,000. In the case of cancer, the number of cells also increases but it's way higher, like 100,000. And the characteristics of the cancer cells are not going to be the same as the characteristics you have in a normal cell. You have some white blood cells right here. One, another one, another one, another one. 
If you compare these cells, you have only four. Here, you have a blood smear of a person that has cancer, in this case, leukemia. Different shape, different sizes, the size of the nucleus is different, etc. etc. This is like 100,000 in the case of leukemia, with different cell shapes and things like that. In the case of an infection, this number of cells is going to increase, but in, you see, for example, in here you see like four, maybe you're going to find six that indicates that you have an infection, but the shape and the characteristics of these cells are going to remain the same, which is a big difference with this one that you have right here.